Hello everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview and a step-by-step -step demonstration of these Buffalo Air Station wireless routers. These are the WZR1750DHP and the WZR1166DHP. Okay, so here's the front of Buffalo's AC1200 model. And this is, of course, the WZR1166DHP, if you need the model number. They are going with the 802.11ac standard. So moving right along, they are considering this the fastest Wi-Fi, which currently it is, the fifth generation. And uh, it is touting the fact that the air station has a, an extreme high-powered uh, enhanced features and performance with signal strength, which we'll go into in a little bit. Also, automatic prioritization uh, control with the QoS that they have built into it, uh, quality of service, if those of you don't know, it would help you basically give you a better experience for things if you're downloading and gaming at the same time. Uh, and in fact, I'll go through that in the demo and show you a little bit more about it. Uh, let me flip to the side here and show you the graph that they give us, kind of comparing the two 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequencies. Uh, kind of a little drawback to 5 gigahertz, you, you can, it's less traffic on the 5 gigahertz range, so you don't have to worry about things interfering with it, but you also don't get the distance that 2.4 gigahertz, gigahertz range will give you. Um, in addition to that, the 5 gigahertz range has a little bit of trouble poking through holes and, and just permeating through solid objects in general. So keep that in mind when you're using the device, and I usually stick to 2.4 gigahertz unless I'm in a really small area and I know I'm going to have tons of tr throughput, I'm going to need my 5 gigahertz range for that because you get a little bit more throughput for that. So you can see in the two different graphs here, these are the different models. The AC1200, for instance, is using uh, up to the N300, 300 megabits per second, and then it goes the rest of the way up to uh, the, full, the full 1200 that it would be able to give you. And then the AC1750, it's using the 5 gigahertz range here, and the, uh, the N2.4 gigahertz range here up to 450. So grand total of, of 1750 megabits per second. Uh, then if I just show you on this graph, they're just showing the AC1300, which is another model that would just strictly showing you the, the 5 gigahertz range here and what kind of throughput you would get for that 1300 megabits per second. So I'm going to flip to the back now and show you the rest of the comparison and what the different models would be giving you. So the AC1166, AC excuse me, uh, is the other model that we're talking about. So direct comparisons across the line, everything is going to be the same other than the wireless speed. So you're still going to get secure connection, an easy setup, which I'll go through with you. Uh, mobile friendly setup if you needed to uh, use mobile device and getting them connected. Of course, they, they both include uh, four gigabit uh, ethernet ports. Uh, as well as their high power technology. Simultaneous dual band because it does use the, uh, the two different radio frequencies, the 2.4 and, and the 5 gigahertz. USB shared ports, uh, they both have two ports, I'll get into that. Uh, the priority control QoS and web filtering and parental control. Important if you have kids in the house and you want to control what they're able to view. Here's all the stuff that comes inside the box. I'll start with the paperwork first. We have the warranty statement from Buffalo letting you know your warranty information as well as some tech support uh, contact information here. On top of that, we also have FCC's regulatory compliance information here. I actually found something kind of funny here at the bottom. Well, I don't know if radiation is funny, but essentially just letting you know you have to stay with a minimum of of 12 centimeters or a, a minimum of 20 centimeters, excuse me, between the uh, the device that's radiating the signal and your body, uh, just because of the way that they tested it. I'm assuming that uh, what they, if you get any closer than that, you definitely get cancer. Because my chances are, uh, my guess is you definitely do not get cancer from that at all. Uh, I guess don't quote me on that though. 20 years from now, who knows? Uh, okay. So also on top of that, we also have the quick start, the quick setup guide. It's going to show you exactly how to get it set up. I'm going to go through it with you really quickly. Although this is pretty pretty easy to do. Just uh, plug in the power and then eventually plug in the, uh, the, the ethernet cable and then we go on from there. So moving right along, we also have the AC power connector. So this way you can get power to the device. Uh, of course, they give you one flat ethernet cable. So this way you can get it connected to your cable modem or your DSL modem. We also have the stand that you can actually attach it to the device. And this is actually what it looks like when it's completely attached. So it'll sit like that, similar to the one already in the background here. Otherwise, uh, both devices are exactly the same. 
And then we also have two screws to mount it to the wall. I actually found this part kind of strange. Looked around a little bit and actually finally found them. Two little screw, two little holes in the plastic in the back here where you might not be able to see them, but they're actually looped through clear plastic that's running uh, just like this underneath the, the middle of that with two drilled holes in it. Anyways, bottom line is that's how you would attach it to the wall. So on to the main event. Here's the air station itself. In this particular model, I'm doing the AC1750. And this is the very front here where you'll notice the LEDs as, one of, as well. Uh, first off, we have the wireless connection LED letting you know that you're connected to the wireless network that, it, that it's on in general. Also, your internet connection light and the router access mode. Uh, now, that'll either be on or off. And that's the difference between it being a wireless bridge or an access point, which I'll show you on the back here in just a moment. The AOSS button, that's actually the Air Station One Touch Secure System, basically is exactly the same as what WP would normally be doing except that it's it's Buffalo's own version so with other AOSS compatible devices you'd be able to click this click that same button on the other device and allow it to connect with security so let me flip this around to the back here and show you where most of the meat really is. Now I mentioned before about the difference between access point and wireless bridge. Now if you had another 1750 uh, from Buffalo, you'd be able to flip this over to the wireless bridge, uh, tap the mode button, and it would then enable it to work with another device, the other 1750, and actually create a wireless bridge to it. So if you were, maybe you have three floors in your household and you want to have another wireless router downstairs, then what you'd do is you'd flip it over the wireless bridge, get it to connect, and then now downstairs wirelessly you have another router that's connected to the, uh, the first floor and using an internet connection via wireless so you don't have to run a cable to it. Now if you were in uh, uh, the normal router mode, it would already be flipped over to access point and if you wanted to enable uh, this as an access point and just give your current router in your household wireless activity or wireless connectivity, excuse me, then you'd be able to connect this from the WAN port to that router and then click this button. It would flip it over to the access point mode as opposed to the normal router mode and that would uh, pertain back to that light at the front being on or off. Moving along, here's the USB uh, section where you'll actually have access to USB 3.0 devices being shared on the network. Now this particular device will allow you to uh, connect your printer uh, or uh, also do bit torrenting. It has a bit torrent client for point to point file sharing as well. So you could connect a USB 3.0 hard drive or a flash drive and essentially get some NAS functionality out of that as well. It's also a DLNA, DLNA certified device so you can easily media stream to other DLNA uh, compatible devices as well as being able to connect it to a printer. Also if you were using any kind of USB storage you'd be able to dismount that device just by holding it down here for three seconds and then the device will flicker mm -hmm. and then go out so the light will go out on that particular device letting you know it's safe to remove. Now we have four more uh, gigabit, uh, 100, 1000 uh, megabit per second uh, ports here. These are all Ethernet ports, obviously. And then you have one for the WAN. You'd obviously connect this to uh, the router from the outside port. You know, it would go to your cable modem or your DSL modem or another router in the household. Then we have the on-off switch as well. Little hook here for wire management and the plug for AC power. Something else I want to mention too about this particular device. The overall look of it, it's uh, it's almost a rubberized plastic. You've probably seen it in razor mice and and other other peripherals that might have that. Uh, although you don't normally touch a router, I just want to mention that that was a little bit different. Also, the plastic here, it's it's a uh, just a normal hardened plastic with a little bit of a like a, a textured finish to it. So it looks kind of nice. It would sit on your desk and and not look too poor. Uh, also, if I flip to the bottom here, you can actually see uh, the rest of this particular device. Actually, this is the AC1300 uh, device, uh, seeing the model number here, so that was my mistake for calling this a 1750. Something I want to mention, too, that was pretty cool, other than the reset button that's down here, is you have this little tab you can pull out, and it's to store your network information. So, let me flip that around so I can show you. So here's the configuration side so showing you the standard IP address it would go to and the, the normal username and password you'd be able to use. Flip that to the other side here and it shows you all the wireless connectivity. So if you, you know, reset this, this router and you're always looking around, oh, God, let me look up on the internet real quick and find out what the standard uh, admin password is or the wireless information is, it's all right here. So you don't have to go very far to get that.
Two things I want to tell you guys before I get too deep into this. One is that I did mention that it was the AC1300 in the last part of this video. I actually intended to say AC1200 model that we were looking at. Aside from that, in terms of the accessories, the biggest difference between the AC1750 model and the AC1200 model is that this actually comes with an inline brick instead of it just being a standard plug that you would use for the power. So that being said, this is the 1750 and this is the 1200. Also, I adapted the uh, the secondary way of attaching the base and that was just to put them on the sides here so they just clip right in and these are the two different ways you can essentially set up the air stations so moving right along uh, I did get us set up with this particular system on our regular computer here so you can see what it looks like using a typical browser I'll also show you the mobile browser which is interesting because it actually doesn't use an app you can just go to log in and click the mobile version just to show you the mobile version of it so essentially what they've done is just code the interface uh, to use that so on top of that if you're familiar with Buffalo devices they did go with a new GUI so this user interface is different than what you're used to. That's because they just updated it. Uh, moving right along, let me just show you guys real quick uh, the basics here. So, of course, if I click on the wireless section, you will notice different wireless things we can edit about it. For instance, the SSID for the 2.4 gigahertz radio, as well as one for the 5 gigahertz radio. And those who don't know, that's essentially what you would see with your wireless device when you're trying to connect to it. Also, you can change the different uh, encryption types as well as the encryption keys and change the channel. I recommend leaving it on the audio, the auto channel, so this way it recognizes what kind of uh, what channels are in use currently in your area, or what has the most uh, issue connecting, and it's going to pick the proper channel for you. So that's the best setting for that. Moving backwards here, uh, here's the AOSS feature or their WPS from from Buffalo. Now it's going to take a moment for this to configure. We'll give it a second to do that. Essentially what that was was it was trying to connect to it as if I was pushing the AOSS button on the front of it. And because I don't have any other devices that are compatible with that, it's just going to sit there trying to configure it and because there's no device to connect to it. So moving right along, if I had USB storage, I, here's where I would click to actually access that and setting up shared folders and login names and whatnot. Here's the guest account area where you could essentially set up a, an SSID specifically for guests that enter your home and you don't have to worry about them getting connected to your to your wireless network uh, via the password you would normally use. So, you know, someone is just in and out for the day or someone that needs you to use the internet uh, temporarily, you could set up a password for them to use and any guest could use that. And next we have QoS, which is essentially quality of service where you can optimize the network to, or the router to give you priority for video downloads or streaming as well as file downloads as well as gaming or something in between. So it, you can basically set the priorities here uh, for which is what. Currently we're set up for video. Moving right along, we do have uh, web filtering and parental controls. This actually uses Nor Norton's ConnectSafe, which essentially helps you decide which particular websites or which particular URLs you want to allow and which ones you specifically don't want to allow. Uh, moving from there, we also can see which devices are currently connected. In this particular case, one wired one and nothing wirelessly connected. And I can show you the advanced settings, which is really where I like to stay because this is where all the fun stuff is. You can get really deep into all the different settings. Uh, this is the system information. Here we have the logs and then selecting which type there are. Uh, the current packets that it's seeing, sent and received, if there was any errors with them. You can also ping out if you're trying to troubleshoot a problem with the network. Uh, from here you can go into the administration side of things where I can actually change the air station name itself as well as the password and various other items here. Also reboot it, system logs, update the firmware. Whoops, just clicked right out of that. Update the firmware which I actually had to do right off the bat since I have both of them. I haven't updated this one yet, but 2.08 is what's currently available out there. I'll move up to applications where you can talk about disk management. If you had a USB device currently connected to it, here's where you would mess around with that. Also the sharing uh, web access to applications. Oh, BitTorrent, let's jump to that. So you can enable your BitTorrenting here and allow it to upload or download and, and uh, essentially delete all torrents here. If that was really, if you really quickly needed to get rid of everything, here's a really easy way to do that. Uh, also, Media Server, I accidentally jumped over that. That would allow you to do all the DLN, DLNA type things. So if you have a TV that's able to connect wirelessly to this device or via cable, via Ethernet cable, you would then be able to view all the, the, mu the music or video or anything that's connected on this and then stream it directly to, from this device to that. 
Uh, QoS, I also already mentioned before and all the, the prioritization that you can do and set it up for different things. Uh, eco mode, which is for power saving and the schedule you want it to save power on. Uh, also the network based USB, so this way you can set up different uh, functionality to share a printer across the network. Jumping up now to security, here's where you'd set up all your different firewall, turning it off or on, uh, as well as IP filters if you want to disable certain IPs from being able to get access or whatnot. VPN and the different settings you want to be able to do for that. Port forwarding, that's a popular one if you're going to be doing some gaming with this. Uh, adding a DMC would essentially say, I don't want to have any kind of password protection whatsoever. This is my demilitarized zone, essentially the one IP address that I don't care what comes in or out of that, just let it all through. Uh, UPnP, of course, that's for when you have a universal plug-and-play type device that can connect to the network, figure out what ports it needs to have uh, and forward those ports on its own. Here's where the web filtering and the parental controls would be for the Connect Safe, which I mentioned earlier. You'd have to agree to the terms, but essentially it's kind of cool that it comes, uh, comes free with this particular device. Uh, jumping up now to wireless, which I sort of mentioned before, but I'll jump into the 2.4 gigahertz to show you that it actually has options for two SSSI SSIDs. So you can set up a separate one, and then you could make them work independent of one another. So essentially, you could do wireless client isolation, which means any wireless client can't see any other wireless cl client connected to it, or you could set it so each SSID is independent of one another, so that anything on one SSID can talk to one another, but the other SSD, two, couldn't talk to anything on one. Kind of sounds complicated, but it's really not. Moving right along, same exact thing with uh, the 5 gigahertz realm. You can do the exact same thing here. And I'll jump down to, let's see, Mac filtering. That's as important. If you want to have absolute total security with your wireless network, you could essentially say, I only want these Mac addresses to be able to connect to my device and that would basically eliminate any other device from being able to connect uh, other than the ones you specifically list. Or if you find somebody on there that shouldn't be on there, you could specifically block them. Uh, same type of idea. So here in the LAN section, you can actually see that you can change your IP address to specifically whatever you want to start and end with and the amount of clients you're going to be currently having connected to this device. So as it keeps picking new IPs, it's only going to keep it to a pool of 64 currently. Uh, also, the least time of each person's IP address, or you can specifically manually assign a particular IP address, as if you were going to do a NAS, let's say. You could keep uh, .11.2 staying the same for that particular Mac, and it would just say, every time this computer logs into the network, it'll always be .11.2. Uh, other than that, you can also set up static routing, which would be helpful if you needed something like that, more advanced stuff if you know what I'm talking about and then your internet connection, depending on what you need to be able to use. So right now it's going to perform the internet connection wizard, helping you to go step by step. You can also set it up for specifics like uh, PPO, PPPOE for use with DSL uh, or, or dynamic DNS if you need to set up something to connect from the outside world directly into this particular device. So here we are, I'm actually in my iPhone right now, just looking at it from the mobile version uh, perspective. So essentially, instead of having an app, they've allowed you to connect to it via mobile version, which is kind of nice. Let me go ahead and log in. As you can see, they've made it fairly easy to see everything. You can see all the same exact items as before. Here we are having the ability to go into the wireless area, the WPS area, USB storage, accessing the guest account, QoS, web filtering, uh, devices, and we even have the ability to go into advanced settings. We will notice it's essentially all the same stuff, but because there's so much more now to show on the screen, everything's kind of cramped up there. So I'll just show you really quickly, essentially all the exact same information as you saw before uh, in the ability of using your app. So if you needed to use this in some area where you didn't have access to a computer, you're just really quickly trying to make a setting change, adding somebody to your acceptable MAC addresses, uh, then this would be a really quick and easy way to do that. Okay, everyone, that wraps up this overview and demonstration of Buffalo's two AirStation wireless routers. And if you liked what you saw today, go ahead and click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe, and we'll see you soon.